Jesus enters the room and his first words to those apostles who are afraid after he rose from the dead are peace be with you. And that's an occasion where he doesn't calm the external storm, but he calms the internal storm that's raging inside of them. This is the best of the week on Relevant Radio. Have you ever gone through a difficult situation and prayed to Jesus to resolve it, but he does something else instead? Sometimes he calms the storm. Sometimes he calms the sailor. Is it possible to have peace even while we're in the middle of a storm? Joining us live from New Jersey is longtime Morning Air and Relevant Radio contributor Gary Zimmick to talk about the times when Jesus doesn't calm your storm. Gary Zimmick is the author of the best-selling new book, When Your Days Are Dark, God is Still Good. Gary speaks frequently at parishes and conferences across the U.S. You can sign up for his daily email reflections, see his speaking schedule, or arrange to bring him to your parish by visiting his website, Following the Truth. Dot com. Brother Gary, thanks so much for joining us. It is always great to be with you. Uh, Brother John, it is my pleasure to be back with you once again. Thanks for having me on. There's uh, several occasions when our Lord Jesus uh, calmed the storm at sea. Do we know of any occasions when he did not calm the, the storm, uh, Gary? Uh, John, I'm so glad you asked that. And, you know, I speak and write frequently about the two literal storms at sea recorded in the Bible. In fact, I wrote a book, Let Go of Your Fear, which focuses on on those two storms where the apostles were on the Sea of Galilee, the storm came, and Jesus literally calmed the storm. He stopped the wind, he stopped the waves, the storm was stilled. And, you know, we look at our own lives, and there are so many occasions where we are in a, not a literal storm, but a sort of a figurative storm, problems all around us, troubles, we're afraid. We look at those stories where Jesus calms the storm at sea, and then we look at our own life and we say, sometimes I'm praying, but I don't see the storm going away. The storm is still around me. And John, as we look in the Bible, there is another storm in the New Testament, another storm, not necessarily a literal storm, but a fierce storm nonetheless where Jesus appears to those who are afraid, but he doesn't calm the external storm. And that's in the 20th chapter of John's gospel. On the day when Jesus rose from the dead, the apostles, they're hiding for fear. These are the same guys that were afraid in the middle of the storm, the Sea of Galilee. They are hiding in fear for the Jewish leaders. They think that they're coming for them next. They are afraid. They're locked up in the upper room, and a tremendous storm, persecution, is all around them. And what happens? Jesus enters the room, and his first words to those apostles who are afraid, after he rose from the dead, are peace be with you. And that's an occasion where he doesn't calm the external storm, but he calms the internal storm that's raging inside of them. And Scripture tells us that when they saw Jesus, when they saw the resurrected Jesus, they were filled with joy. And I think that's an example that a lot of us can relate to. The storm is still raging, but we talk to the Lord and we let him give us his peace and we can have peace in the middle of the storm. I find that so comforting. Gary, is is it possible to love the Lord um, but yet not have peace in your heart. I mean, you, you, you love him on, on one level, but you know, something is still, you know, bothering you. You don't have that, that peace that surpasses all understanding. Yeah, John, I, th- I think it's a process and it's, it's one that I know I'm working through and I believe many of us are going to be on this road. Yeah. On some level, we do love the Lord. We turn to him, we pray, but yet there's still an element of maybe like self-love or love of comfort or something. And this is something I struggle with where we're in the middle of a storm, we might be suffering, it might be a financial situation, it might be a, an illness of some kind, it might be loneliness, where we're turning to the Lord, we're praying, we're asking for relief, but yet at the same time, we're overwhelmed by those feelings of, of fear that the storm is, is causing in us. And I, I really believe that the longer and the, the harder we work, the longer we work at it and the harder we work at a relationship with Jesus, giving him a chance to come into our lives and really, really help us. The longer we do that, 
the greater our peace will be. But I found that it's not always an instantaneous event. It's more of a process. But yeah, there are times when you can still feel the fear. You know, you still have a relationship with the Lord. John, quickly, I just want to point out, too, that just because we're afraid doesn't mean that we're doing the wrong thing. If I'm praying and I still am afraid, I'm still doing exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. Fear is an emotion, and we can't always control the emotion. But what I found is that the, the more you follow the Lord, the more you allow him into your life, the more the fear will begin to decrease and we'll be at peace. We'll have greater confidence that even if we don't understand what's going on, that the Lord is bigger than this storm and he can help us. These um, examples that you've shared with us, uh, what, what do they uh, tell us about our relationship uh, between faith and storms? I like to be comfortable. I don't, I don't like the unknown. I don't like to be afraid. But the beautiful thing about these storms, which Jesus allows to come into our lives, and we see examples of this, the storms at sea in the Gospels, as well as the storm that occurred in the upper room on the, night, on the day Jesus rose from the dead, these storms allow us to exercise our faith. They are opportunities to grow in faith. And that's exactly why Jesus allowed his followers and us to go through these storms. Because it's in the storm when we realize that we are not in control and that we can't fix our problems on our own. And that's the prime opportunity for us, like St. Paul, to turn to the Lord and say, Lord, when I am weak, I am strong because I have you. So when we're in the storm, we are a, a captive audience for the Lord. And we're more willing, at least I am, more willing to turn to him for help because we are helpless on our own. When you feel like you can't go on anymore, uh, that's when you need to, to, to pray even more and to, to seek the Lord even more in those storm-like situations. You better believe it. And that's when the apostles, when they were in the storm in the Sea of Galilee, that's when they woke Jesus up. And these, are, these guys, for the most part, were fishermen. They thought they knew what they were doing, but this storm was beyond them. And they turned to Jesus. They really prayed. That's what they were doing. They prayed. They went to Jesus. They woke him up, and he stilled the storm. And I think that's the example, the reminder for us. When we feel overwhelmed, that's a reminder to turn to the Lord again and ask for his help. Gary, can you talk about hope? There's always hope, no matter how bad things might look. There's always hope, as long as you put that hope in the Lord. Exactly. And that's why these stories are so great, in particular these ones about the storms, because we see Jesus doing something, and therein lies the hope. I might be, and I know, John, so many of our listeners are going through some kind of a storm right now. There is always hope. And I always tell people when I'm out speaking, I've written about it in my books as well, when you bring Jesus into your storm, when you invite him into your storm, it will get better. I can't promise how it will get better. It might be internally, it might be externally. But the proof is, when we look in the Bible, several, all these times, all these incidents where people are helpless and they turn to the Lord for help, he intervenes. He's not going to turn anybody away. He might not do it as fast as we like. He might not do it in the way that we would like. But he will intervene, and it'll get better. Things are always better with Jesus, and I think therein lies the hope for us. Would you agree that everybody's going to have a storm at some point in their life? It's not a question of if, it's a question of when. Yeah, absolutely. As a matter of fact, in the Sermon on the Mount, when Jesus addresses this issue of building your house on a solid foundation, if we build our house on a solid foundation, we will be able to withstand the storms. And Jesus literally says, when the rain comes, your house will stand. Not if the rain will come. The storms are coming. And if, if we're not in the middle of a storm right now, we either just left one or we will be heading into one at some point. That's the way life works. But if we build our foundation, the foundation of our lives on Jesus Christ, and we walk with him each day, we're going to be able to withstand those storms and feel that peace that only he can give. Gary, do you think that these storms are tests of our faith? The Lord is testing us to see how we'll respond, and so it's up to us to be able to respond uh, with, with faith and, uh, and to be not afraid. I, I do, John. I really do. And, you know, there's something about that, that, the idea that the Lord is testing me, that upsets me a little bit. And it's something I have to get over, though, because he's only doing it for my good. You know, he's not playing games with me. He's not trying to prove that he's the boss and I'm not. 
He is trying to help me to grow in faith so that these storms of life won't affect me as much, and then I'll continue to follow him. It's so much easier to grow in faith while we're in the midst of a storm. When things are going well, when the seas are smooth, it's less likely, and I'll, be, I'll admit that I'm guilty of this, it's less likely for me to get down on my knees and say, Lord, help me. So the storms absolutely help us to grow in faith. Well, I, I think that it takes uh, humility to admit uh, that uh, you you can't get over a storm on your own. You need the Lord. We all need the Lord. Exactly. And that's why I'm so glad that you're on the air proclaiming this message, because we need to hear this every day. We can't do this on our own. We can't get through life on our own. The Lord doesn't expect us to get through it on our own. That's why he promised that he'll be with us always. I love uh, that you you mentioned that uh, beautiful scripture of uh, St. Paul from 2 Corinthians 12, 9 and and 10, for when I am weak, uh, then I am strong. And uh, all of us at some point or another have felt weak and have felt uh, in in the midst of a storm. In fact, can you uh, talk about how um, the the situation that the apostles uh, experience, you know, hiding in fear in the upper room is is very similar to what many of us face today? You know, it, it absolutely is, because we live in a world that's <laughs> It's filled with problems. We are not living in a very Christian-friendly world right now. And then you throw into the mix all of our own personal problems, all of our individual struggles. So in a sense, so many of us are surrounded with reasons to be afraid. And if we're not sure of the reasons, all we need to do is turn on the TV or look on the Internet. We're going to get plenty of reasons why we should be afraid. So the fear is around us. Uh, we, we're is similar oftentimes, even if we may not be locked up in our, in our rooms, hiding in fear, we're often imprisoned by these invisible walls of fear that surround us. Like, oh, if I take this step, if I step out in faith, if I take this job, what if it doesn't work out? What if I speak out about my faith? Somebody's going to get mad at me. So we have these invisible walls of fear that we're sometimes afraid to cross. So just like the apostles hiding in the upper room, Jesus wants to come to us. He wants to walk through that door. The door doesn't even have to be open for him to pass through and say the words, peace be with you. And, and John, here's what I like. This is another important point that, uh, that I think comes out of this particular Bible passage. When Jesus said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And this is in John chapter 20. The disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Now listen to this. This is John 20, verse 21. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Now the church goes on to teach that after this, Jesus gives his apostles the power to forgive sins. So we have the institution of the sacrament of penance. But in a general sense, if we look at what's happening here, for me as a Christian, What's happening is Jesus, and this applies to us all, he's coming to us in the midst of our fear. Yeah, we're afraid to, we're in the, we're in the room, we're in hiding. He comes to us. He says, peace be with you. And he gives us his peace. And it's up to us to accept that peace. And then he sends us out into the world. That's where it often gets scary for us. But he's sending us out with his peace so that we can go out into that frightening world and be good examples and share him with others. So that's, in a sense, exactly what's happening to us, that upper room experience. He comes into our life, he gives us his peace, and he says, all right, now go out there into that world. I need you to be my messengers out there and bring my peace to others. And he sends us out into the world, but not alone. He also said, receive the Holy Spirit. He breathed on them. And so we, too, can tap into that same Holy Spirit as the apostles and and, and be not afraid. Exactly. And that's the key. When we receive that Holy Spirit for the first time, when we are baptized, we're different then. We are a new creation. We are empowered with the Holy Spirit And therefore, we can let that power work through us. I do it all the time. Before this interview, I said, come, Holy Spirit, please give me the words. Every time I write, I say it. Every time I'm in a difficult situation in the morning, I'm always praying, come, Holy Spirit, come alive in me. We are absolutely not alone, brother. You are so right about that. Absolutely need the Holy Spirit every single moment of every day. Gary, as always, always a delight to be with you. Thanks so much. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks so much for having me. Keep up the good work, brother. 
Thanks again. Uh, Gary Zimmick, a longtime morning air contributor, a best-selling author, popular speaker, and parish mission leader.